Okay, this is the February 25th meeting of the Planning, Economic Development, and Land Use Committee. Committee members present, Joyce Love, Tom Hohe, um, Judy Doshe, Alfredo Ballerin, myself, Kathy Fahey, other council members present, Richard Conti. Um, we're here to discuss resolution 92120R um, and proposed amendments to that resolution. And that's the resolution adopting community choice aggregation program education and outreach plan and customer opt-out letter. All right, uh, let's see. We'll start with the resolution. Um, Judy, I think most of the the um, ch the changes we're going we were looking at were concerns that you have raised. So um, right up to this afternoon, you were concerned that we hadn't really addressed the concerns you were raising. So mm -hmm. I, I have those uh, your most recent comments from today. Um, Regarding, and your concern, well, I guess we'll just go through them. Does everybody have that? And maybe you can begin to address some of your concerns. And, and, and J, JR and I tried to uh, address them a little later today after we saw, uh, saw the comments. Well, how are you addressing them? I'm well, okay. We, we tried to address them in both, both the resolution and the Mostly the first paragraph of the education outreach plan. So we tried to be more. One of the, one of the things that you raised was um, the importance of informing the public of their ability to opt out of this, and edu and the fact that the education plan really didn't seem to address that. Uh, so we try to be more specific both in the resolution and in the education outreach plan um, that that was being done in that 60-day education period. And um, let's see. If you go to the resolution, if you look at the second whereas, uh, you can see some of the changes that were made. Um, this whole idea, and Judy, you talked about this, is the, the overall goal of the CCA, the fundamental goal of the CCA education and outreach, is to enable eligible customers to make an informed choice about their energy supply options. So that's new language. Um, and then also added, the City of Albany is required to adopt a community-specific plan for engaging in public education and outreach. And then uh, we added to be completed in the first 60 days regarding the CCA program in the city of Albany. Among items to be discussed, we wanted to be more specific, um, are implementing a process to allow as eligible, any eligible customer the opportunity to opt out, as well as, uh, I think we, okay. Is that a new sentence there, JR? Yeah, we, I think we need to fix that. Yeah, it looks like it, it, it tracked out, so I could put, I can edit that right now. So what would we do there? Um, it says this, it looks like it pushed out as well. So there was as well as. So we're going to keep that and take out the period? Yep. Well, no, we'll keep the period and then just as well as. <coughs> oh, capital A. Yep. All right. So Judy, it, is, does that... You think that that, and, and then we added that to the outreach plan, similar language. So you can say what the intent is. The, the, the resolution does not become part of the plan unless you put stuff in the plan. And I don't really, I'm looking at what was just handed out, and I'm not... I don't know what that... What are you saying again? Repeat that. Okay. So l let me just explain a little bit about, about what I learned when I read the order. 
and what I read, uh, uh, the order has an appendix D. Um, and what I read, what I learned when I read the implementation plan. So the interesting thing about the order is the order says you're adopting an implementation plan, a data protection plan, you're adopting essentially the, the, you know, the municipality needs to adopt the local law, correct? So the <coughs> order doesn't specifically list separate and apart an education plan, but what it does say is the implementation plan needs to have a education and outreach program. It's very clear from reading the Appendix D that that outreach and education component, a main goal of it is to educate people about the opt-out component of it. So what gets approved by the PSC, what gets submitted to the PSC is the implementation plan. What our implementation plan currently has is a reference to there being an education and outreach plan that's appendix, I think it's C. Yeah, so you, so what, yes, do you want to start? So, so what we are adopting here as an education or outreach plan is what the PSC is reviewing. They're not going to be reviewing our resolution. So adding stuff to the resolution doesn't make it part of the plan. What? They will be reviewing the resolution, actually. Okay, but when you're looking at the plan, if it's not in the plan, you know, you're following along the plan, and the, you know, so the question is... So we're talking about the implementation plan here. The, imp the implementation plan has an appendix. Mm -hmm. It references an appendix. And this is the... <coughs> the outreach and education plan. It okay. also has another appendix. Your opt-out letter. So, so the structure, uh, maybe this will help, so the structure is all municipalities have the same implementation plan. That was approved for MEGA by the PSC. So everyone gets the same one of those. To allow for municipalities to have their own needs met, there are, as Judy is pointing out, there are, actually, there are two appendices that are municipality specific that get added on to each implementation plan. So the implementation plan is approved. If all is using that implementation plan, then what you need to submit is the two appendices. Okay. One, this document that shows, and the purpose of this document, the education and outreach quote plan, and Judy, I, I totally agree with you on, I, I see what you're talking about, about calling it a plan, but the education and outreach plan, and the purpose of that plan is to show the state that a minimum, and you quoted this in your email today, Judy, a minimum of 60 days or two months and multiple methods have been used to reach the public about CCA, okay? And so that's what, that's what this uh, Appendix C is. And Appendix B is actually your opt-out letter, the other, the, the draft letter that you're editing. So the state needs to see all these specific versions of both of those documents. Okay. Along with your local law and the resolution that says, yeah, we well, didn't just put this stuff together. These are actually, common council has seen these documents and yes, we, what's in them is what happened or something like that. All right. And okay, and so wait just a moment. So I need to, I need to disagree, okay. respectfully disagree on a couple of things. One, the order says nothing about 60 days. It says two months, two months. and two months can be longer than 60 days. Okay. But, but it also says nothing about in the first 60 days. Sure. And we're not talking about when when we talk about the first 60 days, we're not, I, and it's not clear to me from reading the PSC appendix to their order that has the rules that we're supposed to be complying with, it's not clear to me when that 60 day, that, that two month period is supposed to kick in, happen, happen. But it is, but the interesting thing is there is a reference in here about you're supposed to develop the education plan with the ESCO and the municipality. So there are actually seven orders now um, that since April 21st, 2016 through today that are relevant to our conversation. So the rules keep changing. And part of why you're right, they, they keep changing because they realize that the, the 
information that they've laid out has gaps, right? It's a new program, so the state is continuing to fill in those gaps. So if you read the order that MEGA, when MEGA got approval initially, which is from October of 2018. I'm only reading what has been provided to the committee as sure. the PSC order. Nobody's told me about any other orders, yes. and I imagine we need to be looking at those then as well to figure out whether or not we're complying with the PSC sure. requirements. Sure. So the, the, that's uh, the, a subsequent order is what makes it clear that there's, they, they instituted that second round of education. We have to prove that again, and that's why this, this is literally only um, the education up until you do your local law, and up until you get approval. That, that's why. It's because there's more, there's another order, there's multiple orders after the order that you read that, that authorizes CCA in New York State. The one that specifically references the education piece is called the MEGA order, because it's when MEGA got approval. Um, and so I'm happy to provide that or just pull out the text or cite the text that explains the additional education. Um, and to address the reason I handed out that um, little back front colored sheet is because I did see uh, one of your concerns to be about educating on opt-out. We are always educating on opt-out. That is a fundamental piece of this program, and we talk about that constantly. And as you, if you look on the back, there's a whole thing. These are the ways you're going to have to opt-out. This is you know, all of the information. And when people call from your municipalities now, they say, I don't want to even do this program. I want to opt-out now. We tell them what to do so they don't have to opt out. We tell them, put a block in your account, then you won't have to opt out. Because they can't opt out yet because you don't have a program. So to meet their your constituents' needs ahead of time, we're, we're trying to do that as well. Um, so the opt out, we, um, it, the second education period, when you know the price, the term, the supplier, you have a number to opt out, you have all the information, but we can't educate on that now because we don't have it. And we won't have it. And it is one of the frustrating and challenging things about the design of the program. I, I will tell you that. Because people want more information now, and we simply don't have it. So it's like you have to touch them twice, um, if that makes sense. So we tried to address that with the language, just being more specific about that's you know kind of a fundamental part well, of the education. So going back to my comments, the first time I heard your presentation on this and the concerns I was raising, two or three weeks ago, what I had suggested is that we make clear in the education plan that we are attaching mm -hmm. and also in our resolution that there will be additional improvements to this plan that must also be approved by the Common Council uh, with regard to the implementation uh, once this initial plan is approved by the PSC. So, um, because again, I want the, the okay. I, I forget whether it's the implement. I think so it's the implementation. We talked about that a little bit. Right? So maybe we can put something in. What uh, can you finish? Do you think it's the implementation plan? So the implementation plan makes it clear mm -hmm. that regardless of what you do, mm -hmm. and regardless of what the PSC tells us mm -hmm. in terms of approving anything, ultimately it is our responsibility yes. to make sure that whole program is complying with the legal component. And so that is, that is one of yes. my concerns here is we can say, oh, well, Mega did this and Mega did that. And, you know, and it seemed, you know, great. But if something is missing, you know, so, so we do have a real oversight responsibility, I want to say, uh, sure. in all this. And, you know, to, to some extent, we can, we can, Again, I think delegate approval of that, you know, in the resolution and in the implementation plan, say, well, this oversight group is now going to be approving and making sure that there is compliance, et cetera, mm -hmm. with it. But I think, that, I, th I think that it is helpful to be clearer about, because right now what we're saying is this needs to be done in the first 60 days, and apparently you're trying to say, well, this part of it only pertains, what we're approving only pertains to what is going on now yeah. as opposed to what's going on in right. the future. And, and so I still have that concern about if we're going to do all of our activities in the first 60 days, 
not come up. by the time we get the ESCO, all that's going to happen is the opt out letter is going to no, go out. No, 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 but no. <laughs> but that is that is the plan that we're currently approving. That is what we're doing in this resolution. That's what this resolution says. And no, I understand that's not what is supposed to be happening. Right. But well, we're I only approving what is expressly stated in these documents. Sure. So two things. One, I will make sure to get you uh, as soon as possible the language in that references the second education plan and how that also has to be approved by the state. So that there's another one of these processes before we can mail the opt-out letter. We don't just get to mail the opt-out letter. The state does not allow that. There has to be more education. So just like this time, there has to be education. The state has to deem it to be enough before we can get the data to go to bid. That happens again, but I, you're totally correct, and it's my oversight to not remember that you would need to see this, another order to, to know that additional piece, because um, it's something the state added later. Um, and then the other thing that I don't know if this will give you comfort or not, but um, six of the municipalities in this aggregation have already received approval on their plans that are just like yours, what that they have completed. Um, from the state saying, yep, you're ready to go in the capital region. So, so six of the municipal, all the six that we've submitted so far, they've already gotten through their local law process and done their 60 days of education. The state has stamped it and said, we're good. Um, so that, that I, not, not that that, mean, that may or may not mean anything to you, but just so you know that in the process, they're okay with what we're doing. They're okay with our process. They're very familiar with our process. Um, and it, you know, meets their, their requirements. But, but I, I, I understand what you're, what, what you're uh, referencing here and that it's not super clear at all that this, by the resolution, which does get attached to this plan and go with the state together, um, that this is just, well, it does say the first 60 days. Um, well, I guess it, if we were able to add a sentence, like you suggested, that there will be additional at education outreach once before the, the opt-out letter is mailed, that, 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 because that's what it is. The education outreach has to okay. happen before the opt-out letter can get mailed. Well, I think, I think we're talking about, because uh, be, right now is before the opt-out letter is, so we're really talking about additional, a, additional education once the PSC approves the plan and before we send out the opt-out letter is really, and it's in that window, you know, well, and I want to say, including subsequent to the selection of the ESCO. That's, yeah, that's, that would be the most accurate, because that's when it is. And I, uh, we just, you were terrible on the webinar today that we, we just did, where we, we went through the timeline of when that would be. And so that next round of education is really from, it, it ends up being late May through mid-August. That's okay. when that, that education okay. will be. So we already know in the calendar for the municipalities that go forward when that, when that education is going to be. And we're starting to ask municipalities, if you know of events and such that you want, and you know, assume we go forward, that you want uh, representation at, let us know now so we can start getting those things on our calendar, making sure we have a presence at places where your public is going to be. You know, so that's part of how this works. Now, you're saying, Judy, that it shouldn't be 60 days, it should be two months rather than 60 days? Should be the well, I don't know. I mean, because I don't. Say two months, you're correct. It does say two months. Um, we, I don't know why. We and usually we convert the number of days, the uh, uh, two months, to a certain number of days. So uh, to be safest, it's really appropriate to say um, at least 62 days because you can have two months that are uh, 31 days. And In bill drafting, you never use months. So right. days? days. All right. right. So what? So, so sixty-two month days. Is a 30. Always so 30, can we? One hundred and eighty. So is sixty-two 270. days something everybody whatever. can agree on? Yeah, let's whatever sixty-two. Want, can we this change that? Only twenty-nine days. And can we put that? <laughs> what is twenty-nine and not twenty-eight? So can, yeah. Jr. Can we put that both in the resolution and in the education outreach what plan? What are the six cities that? In that first plan? sentence, the yeah. goal of the um, initial. 62 day. 60. I mean, I don't know. If CCA education. 62. 62 is an awkward way of converting it to months to days. It's usually it would usually be 60 days, but. Oh, would would it be? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> then let's do See, 60. But, but does 60 days meet the PSC requirement I, that I says know. two months? 
Well, I'll tell you this. We're going to find out when we submit the plan. And they're going to, no, it'll be, it's, it's. Well, they've already approved. You said they've already, they've already approved. So they've already plans. approved um, the city of Glens Falls, the town of Bethlehem, the uh, town of Gilderland, um, the uh, village of Horry's Hill, the uh, town of New Scotland, and the village of Kinder. Those are the six that they've already approved. Okay. So if we put 60 days, is everyone yeah. okay about okay no, with that? With those 60. Yeah. Did they use 60 city days? Of Falls, city of Saratoga Springs, uh, City of Waterloo, City of Albany, City of Albany, City of Albany. Let the record show that uh, uh, Commissioner Spencer, Chris Spencer, is here. Exactly. With their applications, did they have 60 days, those six that were approved? Do you know? So every, um, you are the first municipality to make really any uh, edits to this resolution. Okay. Okay. So most folks have just taken To the so resolution or to the plan? To the resolution. Everyone's plan is, is, it looks different because everyone's had different things. Uh, you know, you don't have a farmer's market that we've been going to, but like at the Green Market versus Connectedy or Troy's Market, you know, that's happening for them. So everybody's plan looks different. You know, you don't have a, a, a bulletin board up at the library like that. Kind of Everybody, everybody's got sort of a different flavor. You know, the political blogger in Saratoga Springs doing his thing. Everybody's Okay. Different. So, um, Judy, so if we add that sentence about there will be a, additional education and outreach, and I forget the spe specifics, um, in advance of the opt-out letter. So what was, but what was the other language there? So I don't know if I, I, mean, I actually would put it at the end of this whole document, the education and outreach plan. Okay. Um, we, at the end, we have added uh, Mega's contact information. Chris, your contact information is at the oh. end. And that was the other, uh, Judy, to your question about the CCA liaison. So the mayor's office appointed Chris as the CCA liaison, which is why. So his, whether he knows this or not, his information is on the website at the CCA liaison. Um, residents are free to call him as the city representative. Um, but, but the... The so at the very last sentence, we could put that last sentence in. Appendix okay. E actually says, uh, uh, appendix, uh, appendix D. We haven't finished it yet. Says that the implementation plan shall include contact information for a CCA liaison to respond to questions or concerns by CCA customers mm -hmm. and identify at least one local official or agency in municipality of the residents that may contact questions. Uh, that's Chris. Okay. We should. Because we have here all questions and concerns should be addressed to our CCA liaison and CCA administrator. Okay. So we've got that. And that I like the idea of the last sentence talking about the additional education and outreach. But what is that? Is that before the opt-out letter? But what was the other language? No, Somebody it was after the selection of the ESCO. So I would actually have like a heading then that says uh, supplemental education plan to be outreach and education plan to be developed. Mm -hmm. And then I would say something to the effect there will be additional education, uh, an additional education and outreach plan developed for the period after PSC approval, comma, before the opt-out letter is mailed, comma, including after the ESCO is selected. Something to that effect. That doesn't make complete sense the way I just made this note, but including so it's, after but it's the after PSC approval, before and before the opt-out opt -out letter, letter goes out, 
including, and I guess I would say, including education and outreach after the ESCO is selected. Okay. Do you have that, Chair? No, I, 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 I think you wrote it down. If you can provide that to me afterwards, that way. I can okay. I am at the location where you want it. I just didn't hear where it was going. I So uh, head, let me just go over what you said. Supplemental outreach and educational plan to be developed is the heading. Yeah, something like that. There will be an additional education and outreach plan developed after the selection of the... After PSC approval. After PSC approval, comma, before the opt-out letter is sent, comma, and including after the ESCO. ESCO is selected. Can I suggest that you mush the uh, PSC approval and ESCO selection together because it's the education is happening after both of those things and before the opt-out letter. Okay, so that would be yeah. then additional yeah. education and outreach it will be developed after PSC approval and ESCO and, selection. And, and ESCO selection. And that before, shortens it. And before now. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> it's okay. I, I've done this process a number of times, so you're all learning very quickly and impressively. Okay. And this is going right before where on the outreach line. And before the opt-out letter is sent to residents. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to be technical residents and small businesses, be careful. Uh, so, JR, I had suggested at the very end, after we have the mega contact information, that there actually be a separate section there for supplemental education and outreach plans to be developed. And then have that language go there. Okay. Any other changes to the resolution and or outreach plan? Do we need to... Mirror sure. some of this in the resolution, then? I don't think so, because, again, it's the outreach plan that then gets attached to your implementation plan. The resolution, we can, you know, we could really just do something that says, we're adopting the outreach plan. Yeah. <laughs> because right, everything's correct. in there. Correct. That, but we do send it all to the states, in fact, which would be correct. Okay. Can I suggest for residents, and since we're since the, the local law encompasses eligible, you know, residents and small businesses, to for that last sentence to be there will be an additional outreach and education plan that will be developed after PSC approval and ESCO selection and before mailing of the opt-out letters sent to all eligible customers since it's already defined in our law. Perfect. Okay. So you got that. Yep. All right. Well, can I just I, I I the letter? The letter we have to go over to. Oh, okay. Did you have something, Rich? Uh, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have observations, but go ahead, because I'm afraid you're on the committee. I don't know if it's here or elsewhere, anywhere we can add. You know what I mentioned last meeting that it that before we select a ESCO that it goes to the full council for approval. And I see us doing a lot of outreach, but I don't see a lot of, the devil's in the details. And, you know, we should know what's in that contract. We should be able to share that with our residents. We should be able to answer those questions. And if we never see that contract, and we have no say in that contract, I have a lot of concerns about that. That would have been in the local law, though, and we did pass that out of committee. Is there any way to adjust that before it goes to the council? Or can we adjust it at the floor? Okay, I wanna, I just wanna clarify. I, I think 
that we amended the local law to require the CCA administrator to advise us, all council members, at the same time, yeah. the mayor yes. and the oversight committee gets advice. So when you say a contract that we never see, I think... We required that in the local law. We're asking for it to be notified of the recommendation, and I think part and parcel of that it was assumed that that would include the contract then. I mean, maybe we need to... We can go back to that, but I, uh, before we get to that, Alfredo, I want to get through the opt-out letter, because that's the... We're, our focus tonight is on this resolution, so I want to make sure we can finish this up. Could it, did everyone see the changes made to the opt-out letter? Uh, Judy, you had, and I thought it was a good suggestion that we make a bit, uh, you know, a stronger introduction about the importance of moving in this direction. So we added uh, the, the sentence, the beginning sentence says about Albany being a climate smart community. And that, you know, we're addressing taking action to reduce greenhouse gases. Um, and then the other changes, let's see. That was really one of the main change, changes. And then there were some just technical the, changes. And then before the chart, I suggested that we explain why we're providing that chart because we don't talk anything about the opt-down option before we get to that, and all of a sudden you're being presented with the fixed rate that will be the fixed rate that is earlier in the letter, and then you're going to have this opt-down. So I suggested um, the language that is there, except for um, uh, Louise has commented that the word compare should be changed to compares. Oh. Here is how this rate compares to the national grid average price and to a CCA okay. traditional so that. grid mix Thank you. rate that you may opt into. This is a little bit different than I think what we had Oh, she so says C up down on the next page. It doesn't talk about up down. It's so, after the, 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 the bull pay, no penalties and fees, the second paragraph. And it's very confusing oh, yes. right now because it's, it's worded assuming you've picked either 100% renewable or a portion of percent renewable. Um, so if that were not true, then it would be uh, different. So just, I'm sorry, it's worded terribly, but it's just because you allow for every possibility currently. Yep. And this will not exist. Should it be see the C op option to opt down on the next page? Uh, sure. Okay. And this letter goes out after you selected the EOC up, correct? Yeah. Yes. So we would have a contract so we could add more language if we got a guarantee from the supplier correct. that it will meet national grid. Correct. This this letter um, will will go through this process again. Uh, this isn't the last time you have to approve this letter. Uh, all of those blanks have to get filled in and any other changes, and then you approve it, and then the state approves it again before it gets to that. There are a lot of steps here. So that is correct, Alfredo. Okay. Any, Rich? Can I, I'm, I guess one of my, my concerns about this whole thing and, and the education plan is I don't know how deep of penetration you have in really educating people. And the first time people are going to hear about it, is the letter. Is when they get this letter, they're going to say, what the hell is this? Yeah. Um, so so a couple, could you, uh, maybe on the second paragraph, where it starts as an eligible participant, uh, bold that language? Okay, how, how okay. Just bold the, whole, the, pa the, bold whole, the paragraph. Yeah, the whole the paragraph. Whole That's good. Um, on the second fourth, paragraph, bold. On the fourth paragraph, when you use the term aggregation, mm -hmm. uh, can you insert after that, um, uh, through the power of aggregation, then in paren or pooling, close paren. I don't or know. what? Uh, in, in parentheses or pooling, close parentheses. Just because aggregation, I just want to make sure people yeah. understand what aggregation is. And when this letter goes out, is there going to be um, an like an enclosure? There's a, yeah, there's of that's going to kind of tell people what this is. Yeah. It is 
I can hear you on the one, two, three, four. All right, good. And it'll say, like, these are the names. It explains it and says these are the names of the How about just, and that's, well, I don't know how we do that, but that's what we have translated into Spanish and Mandarin, but I don't know how they would go out those languages. Well, or if it's available, and I, hopefully the city website will be updated we'll be right, more, right now. You have to really come right now. Yeah. On the, I, hopefully the city website will be updated, so this will be up front. Right now, you have to hunt to find it. Yes, we'll and talk to them about that. Yeah, the website generally is pretty bad, but um, <laughs> but I'm just looking at something because, as I say, when people get this, just if there's pooling. something a clear enclosure, yes, that's going to really try to explain this to them. And I can send you, I will send because you a link. Because somebody's phones are going to start ringing off the hook when this letter How about just pooling in parentheses, not or pooling? <laughs> what? Just pooling. Yeah, just to kind of clarify what the word, the term aggregation means. Okay. Or word, and I don't Is know. everyone comfortable? Pooling of electricity. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying pooling, but. Just another term to describe just to aggregation. To, you know. Any other changes on this? But, um, I, say that I did for the opt down option. I put I just put another heading on it, just like above it in bold and italicies, because we they mentioned that that's where it is the opt down option. Where at the on the back? The second page. Oh, okay. And then again on the second page also. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Where it says after your enrollment is finalized, again, you don't have to do anything to be enrolled. Is that correct? Right. Okay. You're automa it's automatic. All right. Is that clear here? Are people going to say, oh, after it's final, what, what do I have to do? Is it clear to them? And, and where, we talked about where the opt-out up front. So where are we talking? I'm talking about it's the last back page. The, the back page where it says, For after sure. your enrollment is finalized, you will receive notification. It is clear here that they oh. don't have to do anything. No action enroll. needed. No action needed by I mean, president. Uh, how to? How to? But make that clearer. Mm -hmm. After your enrollment is finalized. <laughs> you, you probably discussed that up earlier. I just want to make sure that even though you might say that up earlier or use the opt-out, it's not going to necessarily register with people. When they oh, your website. electric account will be in that second paragraph on the first page. Yeah. As an eligible participant, you can easily take advantage of this opportunity. Your electric account will be transitioned to a CCA program unless you opt out. How about automatically transitioned? All right. Would that, is that? Uh... That might help you. Okay, do we need something on the back? Do you, do you see where I added automatically? Maybe that, maybe that, that would be different, that might do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. People are still gonna. Yeah. After your automatic. Uh, people will opt out, not know that, that too, you say. It happens. And some of them will opt back in after they figure out what it is. Right. We, we could say after your automatic enrollment is okay. finalized. Yeah. And the back too? No, just in one place. All right. Okay. Is there can any I other changes be, here? Can I say something? Um, <laughs> Can you share with the committee what you shared with me today? Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? Can you share with the committee what you shared with me today? Do you want me to send the language? That um, I yes. yes. Regarding guarantee. Yes. And my request that the guarantee be expanded to all residents. And we are going to put that in the RFP. I discussed it with my team, so we will request it. Whether we're able to get such an offering, we won't know until we can get the bids back. But. Uh, I will send the letter. Are, are all the other municipalities requiring that? No. Guarantee? No. So, so we are requiring a guarantee. We will be putting a guarantee in our RFP because... You will be requesting, you're saying that you want an RFP and our language will say we would prefer a supplier. So in other words, a supplier that submits documents that has a guarantee is going to be preferred over a supplier who submits pricing that doesn't have a guarantee. And I'll bring you whatever we're talking about. We, we need to put the language that way because their pricing uh, may look different and it may not obviously be better. Um, but having a guarantee, uh, we want to prefer that option. If you want And what is that, the guarantee? It would be a guaranteed savings on your national grid. 
So they have to, to serve low income customers, uh, SOs have to do that right now. So that's already an RFP for low income customers, for HEAP enroll. But uh, the point is that you have plenty of, or, or uh, the assertion is that plenty of your uh, residents are low income and are not enrolled in HEAP. And so therefore they would be part of this HEAP program and not have that guarantee. And, and I'll do, uh, the, the guarantee does not exist. It's a hypothetical, like, could, can we get that out of suppliers? The market is moving in that direction. Uh, there are three suppliers that do that right now. Whether they will offer that, I, I don't know, but we don't know unless we ask, so we can ask. Uh, the reason I like the guarantee is because it puts the gamble, like the state official said, that this is a gamble. It puts the gamble on the company that we're paying as customers, we're all going to be paying to this company versus the consumer. And with 25% poverty rate in our city, with our median income of $45,000 and more than 50% of our residents' home pool, meaning that more than 30% of their income goes on housing, I feel more comfortable with the guarantee saying, we may not get as much savings, but you will never pay more than you would have with National Grid. Alfred, I'm comfortable with that because people, individual people, if they want to opt up to, say this means we don't get 100% renewable, uh, but we still, individual, have the option to opt up, so. Yeah, it does complicate the, the bidding. access to renewable. Well, I mean, the bids are complicated. Yeah. It does complicate the access to renewables, but I think, you know, we need to ask the market, we need to ask the question. It's a concern that you all have, it's something we need to do. Um, well, so. okay. I, why, why would it? If they're telling us they can save I'll tell you, now, you know, you know I, I, would. I would like to get this settled before we yeah. get into this discussion. So, I'm happy to stay, and I'm but sorry, this, I'm she sorry. has to leave. So if anyone, if no one else has any changes to the <clears throat> education outreach plan, the resolution, or the opt-out letter, I would ask if anyone has a motion. I make, make a motion that we, uh, Pass this out of committee with approval. Is uh, there a second? Second. With the, with the changes made to both the opt out letter, thank you, Her Judy. Richard's uh, recommendations, um, and my little tweak, and um, and the uh, a few changes to the resolution and to the uh, education plan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And all of you should feel free any to call one in, myself any and others. Ask me did you? How did you vote? I, I just wanted to have a discussion. That's did, not going to be did. part of this resolution. He, no. he did. He did vote yes. Oh, okay. yes, I did vote yes. All right. So, yes. Then, then, vote, yes. All right. So, so then, if you need to leave, to, uh, I wanted to have a discussion about. Thank you, Louise. Goodbye. <laughs> about the council seeing and, and having a set on the final contract, um, because I think. We should have to say. I think it, 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 it's it's a big deal. It's a big shift. I think by us having a say and having a vote, it makes us more accountable. All of us to read it and make sure we are well versed in it. And it also, I think, gives us a stronger hand in trying to get Michelle, the market to shift. I mean, my conversation. But the problem is, they have they were they were told there's only a couple of days before they get the bid that they've got to respond to it. How are we going to pull the council together? I, I think we can. Put, In 24 hours we, or whatever. Will the customer? We put the we put the RFP together. So why can't we put the in, in the RFP? You know. We've got 14 days to respond, or we have, you know, I don't know. We can put Did you mention that to Louise? I, uh, I mentioned, I didn't mention the, the days issue. I mentioned my concern with not having to be a common council vote. Yeah, she see, said, I don't, she I don't can, know if that's possible. She but said that was not, she said, I can, the conversation I had with her today was a really good, good one. She said, I can see what I can do regarding your guarantee issue. Mm -hmm. um, the, other, the other part is, is not in my, that's not my scope. That's within your, your peers on the council. Couldn't we put the however, bid out like however, the day before a meeting? However, I do want to say with regard to, 
with, I, with I regard to the guarantee issue? I can suggest one thing, with, because the local law already gives a delegation over the contract to the CCA Oversight Board. If there's a concern, though, that the council would like to review it and like to have like some kind of say in it, I guess the best way really, because there will be two council members who will have a binding agreement on the CCA Oversight Board. Is there if there's a if there's a desire to have a show of you know the common council approves this or doesn't then the next then the thing would be then to do a resolution thereafter saying that we endorse this or don't like but it's, it, that way it's on the record for that um, but the local law does give the the CC oversight board the delegation of that and, and that part of my concern too um, you know because at the end of the day uh, residents are going to see as as this is our action. We did this. So I don't mind being held accountable for what I did, but I don't want to be held accountable for something another board did and I didn't get a say. If, if, if you're going to yell at me for the trash fee, yell at me. I voted for that. I'll take the heat. I have okay. reasons for that. But, you know, um, that's my opinion. This is new. This is something that. Uh, I mean, the, the, the renewable energy is not going to be controversial because I think that's common sense. This is the direction we should be going in. So I don't think anyone's arguing that. Um, but I think we should be as well versed and we should have a set, a okay. natural set. Thank I think you. that guarantee, though, that you're putting in, and that, I think that's great because we're going to do better than National Grid, so how can anybody... However, I do. So I just, I want to go back to this issue of the guarantee. So I'm a little bit concerned that on the basis of one conversation with one council member, that the RFP is going to be changed. Well, there was no decision made on that. She didn't change that. That hasn't actually been put in the RFP at this point. And, and, and I've been bringing this up since but the But it's of presumed... Me. It's presumed, so I wish Louise was here and I'm hoping somebody carries this information back to her, essentially, that I think that um, you know, we should all be seeing the terminology and the proposal uh, on this kind of thing because on the one hand, I think it's a great idea. On the other hand, if it winds up putting a kibosh because on, on the whole thing or, you know, puts us in a disadvantageous <coughs> uh, negotiating or, you know, bidding uh, process, uh, then that is something that I think that we should be considering and okay. so know, I know about because the guarantee can be, you know, <coughs> one-tenth of a penny kind of make, you know, a difference Oh, yeah. in it or you know or you know or a half a penny or something mm -hmm. like that that then multiplied times everybody then they then have to go through this process to calculate things and do a rebate and you know and everybody winds up getting you know two dollars and thirty six cents over the course of an entire year that administratively it took them far more time, energy, mailing, et cetera, in order to accomplish that. Uh, and how do you accomplish that through reverse billing on national grid? So nice idea. I'm a little bit concerned about really understanding a little bit more about that and not necessarily having that, you know, and, and, and figure out what makes sense with regard to what we put right. in, and, in the and RFP. That decision's not going to be made tonight. This is kind of a moving train because we're voting on this Monday night. And that's my biggest concern. And that, that right. you actually, Judy, you actually bring up something very powerful. You don't like the fact that one council member has been made a change so dramatic without the rest of the council engaged. That's my same fear. That this board of five will make changes that are so dramatic without us having any say in it, yet we vote on this and then we have no other say. That is my concern. All right. So, um, and the, the, the guarantee is something I've been talking about 
since the beginning of this, um, and by no means did I mean to overstep my boundaries or overstep the committee or anyone, um, but my concern has been spoken to anyone that listens regarding this about I don't want the gamble, which is what a state official said, it's a gamble when they first presented this to us a year and a half ago, that it's a gamble. You know, if it goes lower, you, you lose. If it goes higher, you win. Um, I don't want a gamble. I'd rather have a dollar savings that the company that's going to be making money, because somebody's making money out of this, that they have to figure out how to get that dollar credit back to everybody. Okay, I, have to, I'm, I want things to stop for now. There's another meeting that's scheduled. Oh, uh, discussion can continue after this meeting. I'm happy to talk more about it, but um, I'd like a motion to uh, adjourn if someone could make that motion. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, thank you. Kathy, my question Meeting is.